Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I've got another product review for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm checking out Corsair's brand new H150i Elite LCD Liquid CPU Cooler. Now, like every H150i that's come before this one, it is a 360 millimeter class cooler equipped with three 120 millimeter fans. H150i has been the nameplate that Corsair has used for around a decade to signify 360 millimeter class coolers. I don't know why they didn't just call it H360i, but that's water under the bridge. Luckily for me as a reviewer, they've actually shortened the name on this model. There are so many H150i's with so many prefixes and suffixes, they're hard to keep track of. They've jettisoned the name Hydro as a prefix, so although this is a Hydro model that's not in the name, and they don't have Pro or XT or Capellex or any of those other things, you just have Elite LCD. So it's pretty easy to remember. Now the LCD, of course, refers to the biggest aesthetic change, and that's the LCD on the pump. This is the first model Corsair has released with this aesthetic feature, but it's not the first all-in-one to have it, and that's because a lot of the big motherboard manufacturers released this feature a couple years ago, like Asus, Gigabyte, and MSI, and then NZXT, which is Corsair's arch nemesis, also jumped on the bandwagon. And I think that Corsair realized that, hey, even if we have really good performance, we don't have a model that can compete in that premium class that has all the features, including the aesthetic features. So they've jumped into this market with an LCD screen. And some of you may say, you know, there's no value to that on a cooler. Coolers should just cool. But of course, there already has coolers that cool and they didn't have a premium model with this aesthetic upgrade. So that's why this is here. But luckily, it's not the only change to this model. You also get a brand new fan. This is Corsair's new ML120 RGB Elite. And this is very different from previous ML120s. Now, the ML120 was once a leading fan design, but as I've shown in some of my videos, it's more or less middle of the road at this point. It's a little bit loud, particularly at its maximum RPM of 2400. And it doesn't compete with the best radiator fans out there. Well, Corsair has taken this to heart and redesigned this, but the blade design is actually the same. You still get seven wide blades. So Corsair is going to get a little bit more performance out of this fan with a different tweak. And I will show that to you a little bit later. So it's kind of hidden in the back of the fan. I'll give you a close up in a moment. The other thing I want to mention is the price. I think probably one of the reasons Corsair was feeling cautious about wading into the LCD screen market is that it adds a lot to the cost. So this is $290. That's $100 more than the MSRP of its previous high-end model, the H150i Capellex. As a counterpoint, consider Corsair's H150i RGB Pro XT. It was released in early 2020 at the $160 price point. And at that time, it was Corsair's best liquid cooler. And $160 was actually considered fairly high for a liquid cooler in that class. So we can see how much the market has changed in that time. Now, Corsair's top end 360 millimeter cooler is $290. Yes, you do get that aesthetic upgrade of the LCD screen. And yes, you do get some better fans. But hey, there's no way around it. Prices are going up in the PC industry and elsewhere. And it's just something we're gonna to have to come to grips with. So that's all I'm gonna say for now. What I'm really interested in is what this looks like and how it performs. So let's take a closer look at this cooler and then get into the benchmarks. Here's a look at the cooler assembly straight out of the box. The LCD screen on the pump is covered in plastic to protect it, which is a nice touch. And if we take a look at the fans, you'll see that there are a couple of changes. Some are just aesthetic, like that holographic sticker and the branding on the side. But take a close look at what Corsair calls its air guide veins. Corsair says that these actually channel the air. I think they just reduce turbulence. And also the tip of the blades is a little bit sharper. So looking at the old ML120, they have kind of a dull tip, which means they're much further from the frameage. And also that rear frame is a whole lot chunkier, blocking the air and causing turbulence. Here's a look at the full cooler assembled, ready to go in my case. And one thing I'll note is that the thermal paste is pre-applied from Corsair, but I actually removed this and used Nocto NTH2 as I do with all of my cooler reviews. Now here's a look at the cooler installed. It really is a beauty. I've seen a lot of ARGB fans in my testing and these really stand out in terms of the clarity of the color. They really shine. And of course, then you have the pump itself with Corsair's presets, so many different ways to display information. You have a lot of choices. Here I'm displaying CPU load, but Corsair gives you a number of different graphical options for displaying that information, which makes it a lot more interesting, allows you to customize it and give your system a different look. 
My favorite was actually a dual display, which allowed me to, for instance, show both CPU load and CPU temperature. Again, these can all be selected in the IQ software, along with performance settings like pump and fan speed. The software even allows you the option of dropping an image onto your cooler to truly make the system your own. This will look like nobody else's computer. But how does it perform? Let's take a look at the benchmark. Starting with idle, I found that this was actually quite good a tiny bit louder than some of the other coolers I've tested at idle because of the pump noise, but frankly, it's really not that bad. It's still very, very quiet on par with most air coolers because the fans come down to 300 RPM. In fact, you can set them at zero RPM as well. I didn't test that because it didn't fundamentally change the noise profile of the cooler, but you do have that option in the IQ software. Moving on to my load test, starting with CPU-Z, I'm gonna show you the max RPM benchmark. This is where Corsair has always excelled, and actually, this cooler does better than the previous H150i, offering the same performance at much lower noise levels. And that allows Corsair to retain its claim for the best overall performance at maximum RPM without resorting to ultra-loud fans. This system is now tolerable and performing extremely well. And the story remains much the same in Cinebench R20, which is a higher load than CPU-Z. Again, the H150i Elite LCD is doing great here, actually coming up with the best performance, just getting ahead of the H150i RGB Pro XT at much lower noise levels. And I think that the overall balance here is totally reasonable. You get great performance and you have relatively high noise levels, but they're not intolerable. In my decibel normalized tests, the H150i Elite LCD slips just a little bit. Here in CPU-Z, it's more or less tied with a few other coolers and a little bit behind the Arctic and the thermal take. It's all right, but it's not the best. And that goes along with the patterns I've seen from Corsair. These are really tuned for high RPM performance. I believe this is because the changes that Corsair made to the ML120 Elite fan help much more at maximum RPM, and a lot less here at around 1200 RPM. But still, it's a decent result, beating the Noctua NHD 15, that's not a bad place to be. And here in Cinebench R20 Corsair's H150i Elite LCD puts up its worst performance, which is to say, it's not bad. We see that it's kind of at the back of the pack on a decibel normalized basis, and more or less on par with the NHD 15. I also have a few data points to share at 40 decibels normalized. Here, the Noctua and Arctic are actually below 40 decibels because at max, they're at 38 and 37 respectively. So take a look at the thermal take versus the Corsair. This is the most direct comparison. The thermal takes tough fan 12 fans are a step ahead of the ML120 elites, but they aren't RGB. So I think, again, it's a fair trade-off if you consider all that Corsair offers in the package. And finally, I'll leave you with the Cinebench R20 40 decibel numbers. Again, hey, Corsair's right on par with the competition ahead of the Noctua NHD 15 and the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2360 at a slightly louder noise level and tied with the Thermaltake Tough Liquid 360 in terms of the CPU temp, but note the VRM temps are a little bit higher and this is a pattern I've seen throughout the benchmarks. I think that the fans, because they have to run at lower RPM to achieve the same noise levels, they're not pulling all that much air from the VRM section of the motherboard. So they're just not quite as effective as some of the other fans that can pull more air because they're running at higher RPM at the same noise levels. Speaking of noise, here are some audio samples compared to the Thermaltake to give you a sense of what the Corsair sounds like. All right, well, I came away really impressed by the new H150i Elite LCD, and not just because the name is shorter, as I mentioned earlier in this video, it actually performs a lot better than previous H150i's as well. And one of the main reasons is what you just heard in that video clip. At maximum RPM, this is totally composed and reasonable. You don't have to get a headache the minute you turn your PC on and reach for the software to try to tweak those fans. 
it's a reasonable maximum RPM and noise level. 2000 RPM and on my decibel meter around 47 or 48 decibels, definitely in line with a lot of other coolers out there. And one thing that Corsair can still claim is the best performance at maximum RPM, despite the fact that these fans run at much lower RPM and much quieter than the previous versions. So if all you care about is flat out performance, Corsair wins. Now in the past, I've mentioned that I think Corsair was chasing these old school benchmarks that only looked at that and that was flawed. But now Corsair has a cooler that's actually pretty good at maximum RPM and on decibel normalized level, it's on par with some of the other good coolers out there. It's not going to be number one on a decibel normalized level. I think that Corsair would probably need a fundamentally different blade design for its fans and maybe a different pump as well. But as it stands, this is a huge improvement over previous Corsair models and you get huge aesthetic upgrades over other Corsairs and every other all-in-one on the market. I think these fans look fantastic. It actually probably comes a lot down to the software. And look, a lot of companies out there can give you RGB fans, can give you an LCD screen on your all-in-one, and they cannot deliver the software to control that stuff. I'm looking at you, MSI, Gigabyte, Asus, the companies that have a lot of these LCD all-in-ones, we all know that they can't do software. The IQ software from Corsair, while not perfect, is very good and it's always being updated. And in fact, the version I used for this cooler was fundamentally different from the previous versions I've used. So I know Corsair is working hard on it. I could do a lot of customization that I could never do or could never rely on with other software suites. I use Asus software suites a lot in my fan controls and that software is always crashing. IQ does not crash and that means a lot to me as a reviewer. Overall, this is the complete package. If you want the LCD screen with the whole range of customization, the presets that Corsair has baked up for you, plus the ability to display your own logos or photos, it's going to be worth it to jump into the Elite LCD. As I mentioned at the beginning, it's $290, but if you want that customization, say even if you imagine it's $100 or $150 more than equally performing competition, it's going to be worth it because hey, if you're a game streamer and you want your computer up on screen and customized and personalized with your logo or perhaps your team logo, this will allow you to do it. Say you want to have a family photo or a business logo. Say you have your computer out in public or you have it in an office setting. It's going to mean a lot to you to be able to customize it. People are going to say, hey, that's something different. Like, how'd you do that? Where'd you get that computer? And you'll be able to respond, hey, I did it myself. It gives you that feeling of satisfaction that you're able to customize your PC, not just with the hardware, but with the look, with the software with the personalized options that the H150i Elite LC offers you. So overall, a really great package from Corsair. I was incredibly impressed. I had a lot more fun testing this than I thought I would. Now, if you have any questions about this video, definitely post them down below. If you enjoyed the video, please do give me a like and subscribe. And as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I will catch you next time.